You, uh, you see a very uh, intriguing title for what I'm about to talk about. Bretton Woods at 75, 75, 75, yes. A year from now, next April, will mark the 75th anniversary of the Bretton Woods Conference in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. And in view of uh, where we are today, where the whole world is today, it would be uh, particularly timing, we think, to recognize and to celebrate and to learn from what that means, the history of the Bretton Woods Conference means to the world from so many years ago in New Hampshire. In my view, the conference was a radical game changer for the world, for the world. The century prior to 1944 was pretty bad for everyone. Two major global wars. Sandwiched between them was the deep, deep global recession. Global, resulting altogether with the loss of millions of people killed and suffering. The leaders that met at Bretton Woods, toward the end of that war, decided basically that enough was enough. The future had to be based on peaceful cooperation, international cooperation, for the benefit of all people, and not just for the current vic victors, the winners of the last world war. That was a very different view of the world compared to what had existed before. Since then, basically, the Bretton Woods system over all those years has worked pretty well. There were some bumps in the road. For example, during the uh, Nixon administration in the 70s, uh, the uh, the international currency regime was, was basically changed, thrown away, actually, by floating the dollar on the part of the U.S. And in response to any criticism that the U.S. received for that, the way it was handled particularly, our Secretary of the Treasury then serving said, yeah, it's our dollar, but it's your problem. That was a kind of a departure from the Bretton Woods out, uh, <clears throat> outlook and mission. But um, it also, it had a, a direct and rather drastic impact on the workings of the IMF, as well as on the bank, although less so. And some said, in Congress and in public and in the press, uh, Really now, is there any need with the Smithsonian behind us for any Bretton Woods institutions, the fund or the bank? And there was a discussion about it. But in the 70s, and this is not unrelated, there also saw the emergence of the petrodollar crisis, a very serious development which followed and actually was a, a cause of the Latin American debt crisis, both of which lasted well into the 1980s. It became clear to many at that point that the Benton Woods approach of international cooperation continued to be crucial to dealing with these kinds of problems. And as another Secretary of the Treasury said at that part, Henry Fowler, Joe Fowler, if we didn't have the fund in the bank today, we would have to invent them. This was in the early 80s. And Joe, after he retired as Secretary, got together a group of 
leaders, former government officials and financial types, and formed this committee, the Bretton Woods Committee, in 1983 as a constituency, an American constituency, to in support of the Bretton Woods, not only the institutions, but the, the whole concept of the system, which had developed since 1944. Uh, the committee attracted a pretty strong membership, strong leadership, one of those was Paul Volcker, who was co-chair of this committee for several, several uh, years. And the membership has always been very active and involved in support. By 1994, the 50th anniversary of the Bretton Woods Conference was celebrated. And uh, I see there are a few people here who were there then and that was only 25 years ago. Uh, and the result of that was a book, this one. Some of you have seen it, I'm sure. It's no longer available on Amazon. The demand far ex exceeded the, the, or the supply was less than the demand. But it was a very popular thing at the time and um, the recommendations in it met with great uh, interest, acclamation, uh, but not so much implementation. In fact, some of those recommendations we could maybe take up again next year in the 75th anniversary. However, uh, it, was, it was under the leadership of Paul and, uh, and really, in, and at that, by that time, what had started, the committee had started as a domestic U.S. constituency. It had evolved into an international uh, organization uh, with a global breadth. Since then, the 25 years ago, uh, the Bretton Woods Institution and, and institutions and the system have been very much in, in demand. They've been very active. Uh, and since 1954, actually, the Bretton Woods system, the system, and that's the way it's been characterized as a system, has grown in many ways that were not envisaged at the time of the original meeting in 1944, for example, with the development of IDA, of MEGA, the regional multilateral uh, development banks that covered the world, and uh, related financial agencies such as the BIS and the uh, Financial Stability Board. It's all part of, they all work together toward the same objectives. And as Paul Volcker stated, actually this was at our last, uh, last year or the year before meeting of this committee, I like this this little statement he made. After all, Burton Woods is not a particular institution. It's an idea, a symbol of the never-ending need for sovereign nations to work together to support open markets in goods and services and in finance, all in the interest of a stable growing and peaceful world economy. And so with this background, and as we look at where we are today, which is quite a look, and what the future may bring, we thought it'd be very timely to uh, marshal the wisdom and experience, expertise of with both within this committee and across the, across the lines of the committee to uh, look again at and assess the role and priorities of the Bretton Woods system. So now we're beginning to process, this is just beginning, a, uh, what's called, what we're calling it, the Bretton Woods at 75 initiative, forward-looking effort to strengthen and support the Bretton Woods in the future. 
There are, uh, the goals are pretty clear, but they're very broad, and that is to encourage current and future leaders to recommit to the spirit, the spirit of Bretton Woods and the values of international economic cooperation as a force for global peace and prosperity. We just started this. We've asked quite a few distinguished people to uh, contribute some way. We thought maybe writing essays uh, on areas in which they're interested. And it turns out, as so far, we got quite a, a group of uh, actually mostly central bankers and both current and, and former central bankers and finance ministers, including Mark Carney, Bill Dudley, Jean-Claude Trichet, Ac Axel Aveba, Arminio Fraga, Mohamed El Jasser, Toyo Giotin, Tarman, San Mugaratan, Mohammed Al Arian, and of course Paul Volcker, and of course Jim Wolfenson. They've all signed up, and many others have been invited. We, uh, our, our immediate aim is to have a compendium of essays by people like that, many more people like that, and uh, followed by the celebration of some kind uh, next year in April when we meet again. We want very much to have our committee members involved in this process, and we can't go much further than this at this point, but we do want to keep in touch with you and want you to be in touch with us to give us ideas and, uh, and, 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 and direction in which way to go. I think it should be very constructive, and hopefully it will have an impact. Uh, I can't take, I can't ask for questions at this point, but we, all of us at, on the committee level, will be very uh, anxious to hear from you and to have you engage in the process, if you think it's a good idea. And I ask you this question. Do you think it's a good idea? Say something. Yes. Yes. Okay. Does anyone not think it's a good idea? No need to talk.